أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن من أهل الكتاب إلا لا يؤمنن به قبل موته ويوم القيامة يكون عليهم شهيدا صدق الله العظيم The section last section of Surah An-Nisa in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the people of the book. It is continuing. And the discussion about Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam. وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ بَوْتِهِ And there will be none among the people of the book except that they will have to believe in him before his death. This ayah is very important, although people have misinterpreted it in many ways. But according to the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Hazrat Masih alayhi salatu wa salam will come again in this world. And all the people who will be present of the book at that time, they will believe in him. Maybe some Jews also of that time will believe in him. But those who don't will, who will not believe in him even at that time, they will all be eliminated. Just as the nations who denied to accept the messengers of Allah, they were all eliminated. The people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the nation of Saleh, the people of Shoaib, the cities to which Hazrat Lut was sent, and so on. Firaun and his men, all were finished, all were eliminated, because they didn't accept the messenger which was sent to them. Now Hazrat Masih was sent to the Jews, Rasulan ila Bani Israel, we have read it in Surah Al Imran, and the Jews rejected him. So they deserve the same punishment. Although this punishment has been deferred by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala till the second coming of the Jesus, of Jesus, alayhi salatu wa salam. Because he was just lifted. And he will return again. And when he returns again, either all the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, will believe in him, or they will be eliminated. So whosoever will remain, they will necessarily believe in him. Then you know death will come to him. This has been given clearly in hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He has not yet died. He was not crucified. He didn't die. He was not killed. So there is no question of resurrection up till now. Resurrection will be after death. Death is yet to come to him. When he returns to this earth, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells us, he will marry, he will beget children, then death will come to him, and he will be buried along with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the same, you know, hujra of Hazrat Aisha, Tazi Allah ta'ala anha. So these are the things which we believe on the authority of authentic ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to these things, this ayah is pointing. وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ That is, every, everyone believing in the books will necessarily believe in him before his death. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا 
and on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, he will be a witness against them. Because this we have seen, كَيْفَ إِذَا جَيْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجَيْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا The messengers were sent to the nations and they conveyed the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them. But then on the day of judgment, in the divine court, they will stand up as court witnesses, as prosecution witnesses. They will testify, O oh Allah, the message that came to me from you, I conveyed to them. Now they are responsible. So this is the shahada which all the prophets and messengers of Allah will give. This is the testimony that they will testify in the court of Allah, divine court of the last day. فَبِظُلْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ هَادُوا حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٍ أُحِلَّتْ لَهُمْ وَبِصَدِّهِمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَثِيرًا Two more charges against, against the Jews. And because of the evil doings of those people, those Jews who became Jews, حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٍ This term Jew was adopted by them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the name Bani Israel. But they adapted this word Yehud for themselves. Yehuda was one of the sons of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. And then actually they attribute themselves to him. So that is the term adopted by them. That is why Allah says, Allazina hadu, they became Jews. They became Yehud. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give them this title. Quran gives them the title, Ya Bani Israel. فَبِظُلْمِ مِنَ الَّذِينَ حَادُوا So due to the evil doings of these who became Jews, حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّبَاتٍ وَحِلَّتْ لَهُمْ We declared for them as forbidden some of the very clean things also that were already declared beforehand as permissible. As a punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, he punished these people and declared something which were clean in themselves, which were not prohibited, which were permissible to be used, but they were declared unlawful for them. وَبِسَدِّهِمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And this was also due to, we are stopping the people and they are holding back themselves from the path of Allah. سَدَّ يَسُدُّوا I told you, it means to, to hold back yourself and to stop the other. It has both the meanings. They held back. They didn't accept the faith, they didn't accept the Rasul, and secondly, they were stopping others, obstructing the way of the others from the part of the belief and faith. وَأَخْزَهِمُ riba, Another charge. They are accepting riba, usury, eating usury. وَقَدْنُهُ anhu, And they were forbidden from that. وَأَخْلِهِمْ أَمْوَالَ النَّاسِ بِالْبَاطِرِ Another charge. Due to their eating the properties of others, devouring, consuming the properties which were not belonging to them, which belong to others, bil batil, through false methods, wrong methods, haram methods. And we have prepared for those of them who have now rejected even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those of them who have now accepted Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they believe in him, they have mended their ways, well, they are among the Muslims now. But those of them that have refuted this prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَعَاتَرْنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ مِنْهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And now there is an exception. لَاكِنِ الرَّاسُخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ مِنْهُمْ Because from among them there were who rejected Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the majority of them did so. But there were exceptions. A few of them, for example, Abdullah ibn Salam, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he was a big um, alim of, of Yehud from the Jews, a big knowledgeable person, a big rabbi. لكن الرسخون في العلم منهم On the contrary, those among them who are well grounded in knowledge, who are deeply and firmly rooted in knowledge, رسخون في العلم they have the true knowledge and they are deeply rooted and well grounded in that knowledge. Wal Mu'minun and these Mu'mins who are believing in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yu'minuna bi ma'unzila ilayka wa ma'unzila min qablik. Now both they are bracketed together because they are 
believing in what has been set down to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you minuna bima unzila ilayka, wa ma unzila min qablik. And also they believe in that which was sent before. The same words appeared again. Ya ayuha alladheena amanu, aminu billahi wa rasoolihi, wal kitab alladheena nazzala ala rasoolihi, wal kitab alladheena nazzala min qabl. Lakin al-rasikhuna fi ilmi minhum, now those of the Jews, who had well-grounded knowledge, who had firmly deep knowledge, and these moments who are believing in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, now they both believe in what has been sent to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and also on what was said before. وَالْمُقِيمِينَ الصَّلَاةِ And they established prayers. وَالْمُوتُونَ الزَّكَاةِ And they pay the poor tax, the obligatory charity. وَالْمُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ and they believe, have faith, deep faith and conviction in Allah and the last day. أُولَائِكَ سَنُوتِيهِمْ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا So these people are those whom we shall give a very great reward. Now another very important subject, very important subject regarding the philosophy of Quran and especially the philosophy of the institution of prophethood and messengerhood of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna awhayna ilayk, ilayka. Now, this is the address direct to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna awhayna ilayk. We have sent our revelations to you. Kama awhayna ila nuhin. Just as we had sent our revelations to Nuh alayhi salatu wa sallam. Wa nabiyyina min ba'dihi. And so many other prophets, to them also we sent our revelations. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَلَسْمَاكِ وَعِيسَىٰ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُونُسَ وَحَارُونَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَأَتَيْنَا دَعْوُدَ زَبُورًا And we sent our revelations to Ibrahim, to Ismail, to Ishaq, to Yaqub, and their progeny, and Jesus, Isa, وَأَيُّوبَ and Yunus, Jonah, and وَحَارُون وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَآتَيْنَا دَعُودَ زَبُورًا And to David, to Dawood, we gave Zabur, we gave the Psalms. So this is a special, you know, mention of Psalm, because that is also one of the books of Allah. Torah, Zabur, Injil, Quran. So because that is a special point about Hazrat Dawood, so he has been mentioned separately. Now this is like a flower pot of the names of prophets and messengers of Allah. And you will find time and again in the Quran, at different places, these names are enumerated, you know. Just like a flower plot, all these names come together. إِنَّا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ كَمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ نُوْهِمْ وَالنَّبِيِّنَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ وَلَسْبَاتِ وَعِيسَىٰ وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُونُسَ وَحَارُونَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ وَآتَيْنَا دَعُودَ زَبُورًا Now that point which I explained already. وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَصَصْنَاهُمْ عَلَيْكَ and we have sent those messengers also whom we have mentioned to you before. وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْسُسُمْ عَلَيْكُ And there were sent other messengers also who have not been mentioned to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now please understand this point. The names of the other messengers of Allah, prophets of Allah, if they were to be given in Qur'an, the knowledge of history and geography would have to be given first. If a Nabi came to China, what is China? Where is China? They, don't, they didn't know the history of China. If somebody had come in India, they didn't know the history of India. So actually in Quran, only the names of the messengers and prophets who were sent in the Middle East, this area, because these people who were the first addressees of Quran, the Arabian peoples, they knew the history. They knew the name of Dawood and Suleiman. They knew the name of Hazrat Lut and Hazrat Saleh because they were all sent to this area in their traditions, in their literature, in their poetries. These people were mentioned. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given in Quran only the history of the messengers and prophets who were sent in this area. But principally we believe that to every region prophets were sent. 
وہ ان من قریت اللہ خلافیہ نذیر دیر ہیز نو نو ٹاؤن ان وچ وی ہیو ناٹ سینڈ اینی وارنر ام من قریت اللہ خلافیہ نذیر ولی کل قوم ہاد ٹو ایوری نیشن وی سینڈ اے گائیڈنس اے گائیڈر ہو یوز ٹو گائیڈ ٹو دی رائٹ پاتھ ولی کل قوم ہاد و ام من شین اللہ وہ ام من قریت اللہ خلافیہ نذیر سو ٹو ایوری ریجن پروفٹس ہیو کم And there has been, you know, a mention in the Kashf of Hazrat Ahmad Salhamdi Rahmatullah Alayhi. He says that 30 prophets of Allah are buried in that region of East Punjab. East Punjab where is Sarhand situated? Where Ahmad Salhamdi, Bujadid Al-Fasani Rahmatullah Alayhi is also buried. He says in the nearby region, 30 prophets of Allah are buried. Now this can be a Kashf, you know, to a Waliullah. He can know it. We can't know it, these things. But you know, these people, they have those, those eyes which can pierce and see things beyond matter. They have difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to whomsoever he likes. Hazrat Umar radhi Allah ta'ala anhu was sitting in the mosque and delivering his khutbah, Juma sermon in Medina. And you know, he saw the battlefield in Syria. And he saw that Sariya radhi Allah anhu, he was commanding the Muslim army at that time, he was committing a mistake. And Hazrat Umar tells him, Ya Sariyato, Ilal Jabal, what are you doing? You should go to their side. You should take the protection of mountain. You should keep the mountain behind you. And Hazrat Sariya listened to his voice over there. So now today, if you can convey your message from here to Pakistan through telephone or, or something, well, these things could be done without these means. Now we can very easily believe in these things. Hundred years ago it was very difficult for people to believe. But today it's very easy for us to believe. By simple, you know, these machines and instruments, if we can do it, why can't Allah do it without the machines? These things can be done. So actually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been sending His messengers and prophets to every region of the world. But we can't be sure. There is an opinion that Mahatma Gautam Buddha was a Nabi. I tend to agree with this. Tend to agree, but we can't be sure. And this is the opinion of Maulana Manadir Asan Gilani Rahmatullah Alayh. One of very big ulama of Indian subcontinent of this century. The beginning of this century. Manadir Asan Gilani. He is of the view that Zul Kifl who is mentioned in Quran, we know nothing about him, no details. Only twice in Quran his name appears as Zul Kifl. And he says he is Kapal Vastu Wala. Kapal Vastu. He was the prince of Kapal Vastu. Kapal Vastu ka shahzada. Kapal Pe P doesn't, uh, doesn't occur in Arabic. It is changed into Fa. So Kapal Kafl, Zul Kifl, Kifl Wala. He is the person mentioned in Quran according to him. But we can't be sure. But I tend to agree with him. But you know, we must believe that definitely in other regions also, prophets of Allah have been sent, messengers of Allah also came, but only the names of this region were mentioned. وَرُسُلًا قَدْ قَسَسْنَاهُمْ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَرُسُلًا لَمْ نَقْسُسْمْ عَلَيْكَ وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَقْلِيمًا And Allah talked to Moses as it is talked. Don't think it is proverbial. He talked to him directly in a direct dialogue. So that was special for Dawood, Mahatena, Dawood, Zabura. And in the next ayah, because it is something special. Even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't have the chance to talk to Allah directly while on this earth. He had a direct conversation only on the night of ascent. Night of Miraj. Not here. But it is a special point for Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam. He talked to Allah. Kallam Allahu Musa taklima. It's literally he talked. Allah talked to him directly. In direct dialogue. Now comes this, that ayah which I was referring that it is most important ayah regarding the philosophy of the institution of prophethood. 
رسلم مبشرینا و منظرینا لاللہ یکونا لنا سے اللہ حجت بعد الرسل وکان اللہ عزیز الحکیم وی ہیو بن سینڈنگ دیز میسنجرز ایز مبشرین اینڈ منظرین مبشرین ویئرز آف گلیڈ ٹائڈنگز فار ہوم ٹو بلیو ہو ایکسپٹ دی فیتھ ہو ڈو گڈ ڈیڈس دے برنگ ٹو دیم دی گلیڈ ٹائڈنگز پیراڈائز از ویٹنگ فار یو اے ویلکم اویٹس یو دیئر جنا از ویٹنگ فار یو اوپن آرمز اوپن گیٹس گلیڈ ٹائڈنگز اب شروع مل جنت اللہ کل تم تو ادون ہیو دی گریٹ ہیو دی گڈ ٹائڈنگز and they are warners for whom who reject the faith don't believe in allah don't believe in 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 the messengers don't you know they believe in the books they are not doing good deeds so this is the basic function of nabi no nabi had the power to bring anybody forcibly to the right path even muhammad couldn't do it sallallahu alaihi wasallam even for his own uncle although he protected him he loved him and definitely muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also loved him then he should have been grateful to him also because he was protecting him and how you know he would have loved that he should accept islam that is why even on his death bed the prophet said to him oh my uncle you utter these words ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah you only in my ears you utter I'll testify on the day of judgment. But he refused. And that is why Quran says, Inna ka la tahdi man ahbabta wa lakinna Allah yahdi man yasha. Oh Muhammad, you cannot guide anybody whom you like. It's only Allah who guides anybody he likes. This authority rests with Allah only. You are Mubashir, you are Nazir. These two words are very important. They are repeated so many times. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَإِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا سورة بني إسرائيل last section وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا كَإِلَّا مُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا in سورة كهف رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنزِرِينَ وَمَا نُرْسِلُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنزِرِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّبِيُّ إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا وَدَاعِيًا إِلَى اللَّهِ بِإِذْنِهِ وَسِرَاجًا مُنِيرًا so بشارہ and انذار glad tidings and warnings these are the two main functions basic functions le allah why le allah yakuna lin nas ala allah hujjat ba'd rasul so that there remains for the people any excuse any plea against allah after the messengers what does it mean when the messenger has come he has conveyed the message of allah he has shown the right path he has presented a personal example also now nobody can plead ignorance oh allah we didn't know nobody showed us the path nobody called us to the right way nobody told us what you like and what you dislike how come you are you are accounting us for such for something which we were not, not told we should not be accountable for those things which were not told to us Although a human being is accountable on the basis of the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. فَجَعَلْنَا هُوْ سَمِيَمْ بَسِيرًا We had given you the intellect. We have given you the heart. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا All these things. All human beings are basically responsible on the day of judgment on the basis of the faculties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. But now when Rasul has come, when a messenger has come, he has given the correct message and he has presented an example also, a practical example. Not only showed the path, he actually, he acted upon the deen himself and presented his example before the people. Now there can be no excuse, no plea on the day of judgment. Rasulam mubashirin wa munzirin wa Allah yakuna linna se ala Allah. Now again see, lam and ala. Linna se hujja, ala na se hujja. There should remain no hujja, no excuse, no no plea, no argument in favor of people against Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. 
That is why I told you, Al Quran is hujjatul laka or alayka. Quran is either an argument in your favor or against you. In the same way, shahada is against someone and in favor of someone. Shahada lahu, shahada alayhi. That is witnesses testify against someone and testifying in his favor, shahida lahu. Because this word will again appear in Surah Al-Ba'idah. رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْزِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا Allah is ever powerful, all authorized. He could bring you to book on any basis, but He is Hakim. He is the wise. He is all wisdom. So He has designed this system of Nabuwa and Risala that He has been sending His message of Wahi to so many people. Inna awhayna, now revert to that ayah. Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuhin wal nabiyyina min baadihi wa awhayna ila Ibrahim wa Ismaila wa Ishaqa wa Yaquba wa Laswati wa Isa wa Ayyuba wa Yunusa wa Haruna wa Sulaymana wa atayna Dawud wa Zabura wa kallam Allah Musa taqlima. All these people were sent. Why? It was no exercise in futility. It was not a hobby with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a basic thing about the accountability of the Day of Judgment, that after these passengers have come, now nobody can plead ignorance, now nobody can take the refuge that, oh Allah, I didn't know. You knew it, everything was made clear to you. Even a practical example was produced before you in the person of the messenger. Rasulun mubashirina wa munzirina li Allah yakuna linnasi ala Allahi hujjatun ba'da rasul wa kana Allahu azizan hakima. لَكِنِ اللَّهُ يَشْحَدُ بِمَا أَنزَرَ إِلَيْكَ أَنزَلَهُ بِعِلْمِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَشْحَدُونَ But Allah bears witness Himself with what He has sent down to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, that He has sent down that with His knowledge. It is out of His knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent this book to you. This is a part of His knowledge, a part of His wisdom. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, has blessed you with. And not only Allah is a witness to it, all the angels are witness to it. لَكِنِ اللَّهُ يَشْهَدُ بِمَا أَنزُلَ إِلَيْكَ أَنزُلَهُ بِعِلْمِهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَشْهَدُونَ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا And you know this testimony of the angels is mentioned. Although Allah himself is sufficient as a witness, he doesn't need any additional witness. But because it is a fact, this fact has been mentioned that all the angels are also witnesses to it. Inna al-ladina kafaru wa sadu an sabirillah. Verily, and certainly and surely, those who adopt kufr, ungratefulness, unthankfulness. Now, what should be the thankfulness when Allah has sent the book, Allah has sent the messenger? You believe in Him. You should benefit from the teachings. You should benefit from the divine guidance. This is shukr. And if you are not using these things, it is kufr. It is thanklessness, ungratefulness. In the Ladina kafaru. And then they rejected the faith. They didn't believe in it. But saddu and sabirillah. Sadda again both ways. They themselves held back in not believing in it. And they also stopped others, put hurdles in the ways of the others also, that they should also not accept it. In the Nazila Kafar was Saddu and Sabirillah. Now this was the character of the Yahud. They not only they didn't believe in Muhammad themselves, they also were stopping. And they were exerting to their utmost that nobody should believe in him. They have gone astray. They have gone far astray. They have deviated from the right path. To a very great distance. In the Ladina Kafaru was Alamu, Lam Yakulillah Huliyafiralahum. Again repeating, those who have unbelieved, who have rejected this faith, and who are the evildoers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to pardon them, not going to forgive them. Layafiralahum, Wala Layadiyahum Tariqa, and is not going to show them any path. Lead them to any path, illa tariqa jahannam, except the path of the hell. Now this path is only open for them. 
illa tariqa jahannam khalidin fiha and they will dwell in it abide by it in it for ever for ever wa kana zalika ala allah yasira and on allah subhanahu wa taala this is easy don't think it is very difficult for allah to do it ya yuhannas now there is a direct address also up till now to the jews it was all a long charge sheet not addressing them directly but here for once in this surah also now they are directly addressed and in a very appealing way ya yuhannas oh mankind although the words are common but you know who are being addressed here are the people of the book ya yuhannas oh people qad jaakum rasul bil haqq min rabbikum our messenger has come to you with the total truth from your lord faamenu khairan lakum believe in him have faith in him accept him it is better for you by in takfuru and if you reject him if you deny him if you don't believe in him if you disbelieve him fa inna lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard so allah don't care for you because to him belongs all the things whatever is in the heavens or is in the earth so he doesn't care for you wa kana allah aliman hakima and verily allah is ever knowing all wise ya al kitab now again ya al kitab includes both the jews and the christians but here really the christians are addressed Yaal al kitab la taghlu fi dinikum. Don't exaggerate in your religion. It is the charge against the Christians. They raise the level of a messenger of Allah to Godhead. Included him in Godhead. Three in one, one in three. Some of them say he is God incarnate. Some of them it is one aspect of Godhead. Three aspects of Godhead, but they have raised the level. This is ghulu, exaggeration. They have not denied. They have not rejected Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. That is why you know how much Quran emphasizes that Muhammad is messenger of Allah and his bondsman and he is a basher. Ol in nama na basharum mislokum yuha ilay an nama ilahu kum ilahum wahi. فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا. It's very important because people when they exaggerate and they exaggerate out of love, out of love they raise the level. And in the same way, we Muslims, among our those people who have raised Muhammad to the level of Allah, and no less a person than a very great very big alim ahmad rada khan barelvi and it is his couplet wahi jo mustawi e arsh tha khuda ho kar utar pada wo madine mein mustafa ho kar the same person who was on the arsh as khuda as god descended down in madina in the form of mustafa what is the difference between the christian belief and the belief of these muslims so they are very close to each other and it is ghulum so this is this word is very important ya ahl al kitab la taghlu fi dinakum wa la taqulu ala allah illa al haqq don't attribute to allah except what is truth in namal masihu isa ibn maryam ar rasulullah verily al masih jesus son of mary is the messenger of allah wa kalimatuhu and is a word from him alqaha ila maryama which he sent down to mary wa ruhum minhu and is a spirit from him But each one of us has a spirit from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Ya Salu na kadi ruh, kuli ruh mi namre rabbi. But but there is a difference of grades. Gar hifze baratim na kuli zindi thi. Ruh of Muhammad 
and ruh of me or you ke nisbat khak rab alam e pak so actually this is also ruh of min ho ruh of hazrat e masih alaihi salam is a special spirit no doubt but it is the spirit of allah subhanahu wa taala qul ruh min amri rabbi so that is the position innamal masihu isa ibn maryam rasulullah number 1 wa kalimatuhu number 2 alqaha ila maryam wa ruhu minhu faaminu billahi wa rusulihi so have faith and have belief in allah and his messengers all our messengers i don't remember you know fully the couplets in musaddas se hali magar mu'minon par kushada hai raah wo nabiyon ka rutba khuda se badha hai imamon ka rutba nabi se mila hai i don't remember the verse you know but i am giving the essence if the christians do it they are kufar if we do it we are mu'minin the crime is the same the sin is the same they also did not reject jesus they raised him to the level of godhead and we also out of love extreme love for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have raised him to that level faamanu billahi wa rusulihi so have faith in allah and his messenger wala taqulu salasa don't say three don't believe in trinity intahu stop here khair lakum this is good for you innama allahu ilahu wahid allah is the one he is the only god subhanahu wa yakuna lahu walad he is much exalted much above and beyond this position that he might beget a son this doesn't become of him he doesn't require a son why son is required by a person why because he knows he has to die so his name you know will be remembered by the son and then the son of the son it's as if i am continuing some existence of my own is continuing through my progeny that is why we very much wish that we should have sons it's a continuation of our own existence but allah himself is never to die he is there he is continuous wallahu baqi min kulli fanin so he doesn't need any son subhanahu an yakuna lahu walad he is much above it much exalted much beyond this level that he may, might be get a son lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard to him belongs everything all the things which are in the heavens and in the earth wa kafa billahi wakila and allah is sufficient as a protector and a guardian lan yastanqif al-masih an yakuna abdan lillah Masih is not going to feel it a humiliation that he is an abd of Allah. Neither Muhammad feels it to be a humiliation. We testify along with prophethood and messengerhood. Nashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa nashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Rather, the more emphasis is on abduhu. At so many places in Quran, you will find, you know, abduhu mentioned, not rasuluhu. سبحان الذي اسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام الى المسجد الاقصى الحمد لله الذي انزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا تبارك الذي نزل الفرقان على عبده ليكون للعالمين نذيرا فتس عبد عبد يغر عبده شيء دي يغر ما سرى با انتظار منتظر بٹ اي دونت ہیو ٹائم ٹو ٹرانسلیٹ دس کپلٹ لن يستنكف المسيح ان يكون عبدا لله ولا الملائكه ولا الملائكه المقربون ايون يو نو دي انجلز ور فيري كلوز اند فيري نير تو الله سبحانه وتعالى دي دونت فيل اشيمد اي دونت فيل هيميليتيد ذات دي ار دي عبدس دي ار دي بونزمن دي ار دي سليفز اوف الله ومن يستنكف عن عبادته هو سو ايفر فيلز اشيمد ان دي بونزمن شيب اوف الله whosoever feels that it is humiliating for him that he be regard he be regarded as a bondsman to allah as a servant to allah fa sayahsharuhum ilayhi jamia so allah will gather them together before him they will have to come to him if they feel it to be, to be humiliated well they will have the humiliation on the day of judgment 
فام الدین آمن و عامل الصالحات سو ایز فار دوز ہو ہیڈ بلیوڈ اینڈ ڈن گڈ فیو فی ہی مجو رہوم ہی ول پے دم دے ریوارڈ ان فل و یزید ہوم ان فولی ایڈنگ ٹو دم یٹ مور آؤٹ آف اس باؤنٹی وام الدین استن کفو و استق برو اینڈ ایز فار دوز ہو فیلٹ اشیم ٹو بی سرونٹس آف اللہ and who became arrogant mastakbaru then fayuazzibuhum azaban alima allah will chastise them punish them with a very painful chastisement painful punishment wala yajiduna lahum min duni allah waliyan wala nasira and they won't be able to find for them against allah this doom you know this can be translated in many ways except allah but here this proper word is against allah they will not be able to find any protector any helper against allah ya yuhannas now this is so to say the end of the surah qad jaakum burhanum mir rabbikum wa anzalna ilaykum nuran mubina o mankind a clear sign and proof has come to you That clear sign and proof is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is himself a burhan. Kirdar me, guftar me, Allah ki burhan. Allah ma ikbal uses these words for bande mumin. Kirdar me, guftar me, Allah ki burhan. So if a mumin is a burhan, well, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the completest burhan of Allah subhanahu wa taala. یا یو ناس کو جا کم برہان ربکم وانز اللہ علیہ کم نور مبینا اینڈ وی ہیو سینڈ ڈاؤن ٹو یو اے ویری شائننگ لائٹ دیٹ شائننگ لائٹ از دس برہان از محمد رسول من اللہ یتلو صحف متحرت فی ہا کتب قیم لم یقل الدین کفر من اہل کتاب و المشرقین منفقین حتاتی ہم البینا اینڈ وٹ از دیٹ بینا رسول من اللہ یتلو صحف متحرت فی ہا کتب قیمہ یہ دی رسول اس برہان اینڈ دی بک دیٹ از دی نور وانزلنا الیکم نورا مبینا وی ہیو سینڈ ڈاؤن نزول اس فر قران ا لائٹ وچ از ویری شائننگ ویری مینیفیسٹ لائٹ فم الذین امنوا بالله واعتصموا به ناو ایز فر دوز ہو بلیو ان ہم who have faith in him who have accepted him as their leader as their guide as their mentor wa tasamu bihi and have clung to him who have believed in allah and has clung to allah hold fast to allah hold fast to allah believing in him holding fast to allah holding fast to his deen holding fast to allah holding fast to his rope to his cable and that rope and cable is quran wa tasimu bi habl allah jamia and the prophet said huwa habl allah al mateen according to a hadith narrated by hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala and in another hadith narrated by abdullah ibn mas'ud al quran habl allah al mamdud min as sama'i lil ard this quran is a rope of allah which is stretching between the earth and the skies and heavens And in another hadith, the wordings are "tarafuhu bi adikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah." It is such a rope that one end of that rope is in your hands, and the other end of the rope is in the hands of Allah. Tarafuhu bi adikum wa tarafuhu bi yadillah. Fama al-ladhi naman wa atasamu bihi fasayud khilohum fi rahmati minhu. He will make them enter. He will admit them to his mercy, to his fadlin and his bounty. This rahma is for forgiveness. if they had they had some shortcomings some bad deeds also the rahma will wipe it out and the fazl is the bounties of jannah so you will give them from mercy and favor and guide them to the straight and straight and he will guide them lead them ilaihi yahdi him ilaihi towards allah note it this is called suluk What is suluk? What is tariqat? Taqarrub ila Allah. You want to be 
nearer and nearer and nearer and closer and closer and closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to become closer and closer to Allah, you need a path. That is called suluk. That is called tariqat. That is called sharia. There is no difference between sharia. Share means path. Tariq means path. This is only the two aspects of that path. The legal side, the external side is sharia. The inner side, the hidden side is tariqa. Sharia tells you how to pray. And tariqat will tell you what should you feel when you are praying. You are standing, you have folded your hands, you have gone bowed down in ruku, you are prostrating in sujood. It is a sharia. But you know, your whole personality is bowing before Allah. You are really submitting. Do you really feel you are in the presence of Allah? Do you really have a direct conversation with Allah? That is the tariqa. So sharia and tariqa together. The only difference is the external, visible side, legal side, fiqhi side is sharia. The internal, the real essence, the real spirit of these things, that, that is dealt by tariqa. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَعَتَصَمُوا بِهِ فَسَيُدْخِلُهُمْ فِي رَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُمْ فَضْنِرْ وَيَهْدِيهِمْ إِلَيْهِ سِرَاتًا مُسْتَقِيمًا He will guide them to a straight path leading towards Him. Now the surah has ended. Only one appendix. This ayah, you know, it is the appendix. Ayah number 176. A question about the law of inheritance. Just as we had, you know, some instructions in the first section of this surah about women, about orphans, orphan girls. But there were certain questions about doing justice between the wives if you have more than one wife. About those also there were questions. Those questions were later on explained. يَسْتَفْتُونَكَ فِي قُلِ اللَّهُ يُفْتِيكُمْ فِيهِنْ now again there was the law of inheritance about Kalala. Some instructions came. Now there was a question. Yastaftunaka, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they want a proclamation and a pronouncement from you. They are wanting a fatwa from you. Qulillahu yuftikum fil kalala. Say to them, well Allah is pronouncing and Allah is giving you the verdict about Kalala. Allah wants to remove your doubts or misunderstandings about Kalala. In Imraun Halaka, Laysa Lahu Waladun, Walahu Ukhtun. If somebody dies, some person, he doesn't have any parent, nor any son or daughter. He is called a Kalala. Now, if he has a wife, Wife will get one-fourth. To whom shall three-fourth go? <coughs> Wife can get only one-fourth. To whom will three-fourth go? To the brothers and sisters. They are called Zawil Arham. Zawil Fries. Zawil Fries are only three. Parents, father, mother, group together. And the progeny, sons and daughters. And wife and husband. They are the Wilfrais. Their portions in the inheritance are fixed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his book. In the second section of Surah Al-Nisa. In very profound ayat. Only two ayat and it gives the full law of inheritance. Now if something remains, or in this case when there are no parents, they had already died. There are no children surviving. Maybe they were, they died before the death of this person. Or he was issueless. Now, if there is a wife, she will get one-fourth, three-fourth will go where? And if the, the wife also doesn't exist, then who will inherit? The brothers and the sisters. Now, what will happen? These brothers and sisters will behave just as sons and daughters behaved in the law of inheritance. What is it? If there was one son, he would inherit the whole. If one daughter, she would inherit half. If two or more than two daughters, they will be equally divided between them in the two-third. 
such law was given in the beginning. And that is the same case for the real brothers and sisters. There in the second section, the commandment was given for akhlafi, step brothers and sisters. And I told you that in Arabic custom, when father is common, irrespective of whether the mother is also common or mothers are different, they are called real brothers. They are equal in status, no difference. Although there are two terms, aini. Aini are those where father and mother are both common. Allati. Allati are those brothers and sisters who have a common father but different mothers. The third is akhlafi. Mother is common, fathers are different. Akhlafi. So if they are akhlafi brethren or sisters or brothers, the law is given in the very beginning in the second section of Surah An-Nisa. But people were bewildered. What about the real ones? So this real one is given here. وَلَهُ وَلَدٌ وَلَهُ أُخْتٌ فَلَهَا نِصْفُ مَا تَرَكْ Just as a single daughter could have inherited only half, so if a single sister is there, real, any or allati, she will inherit only half. وَهُوَ يَرِسُهَا إِلَّمْ يَكُلْ لَهَا وَلَدٌ and if a woman dies without any aulad, without any progeny and parents, and he has a, and she has a brother, brother will inherit full whole of it. Just as the son, you know, if he was alone, the only son, he would have inherited the whole of it. So if there is only one brother, he will have the total inheritance. If the sister, then half. فَإِنْ كَانَتَ سْنَتَيْنِ فَلَهُمَ سُلُسَانِ If there are only... Sisters, and they are two, or more than two, then you know they will have two-third. Mimma tarak, or whatever he has left. And if there are brothers and sisters, both. The same wordings with which this, that law started. So if there are brothers and sisters, now the whole thing will be divided according to that rule, that for each male will be the portion equal to two females. Allah is making it, explaining it clearly to you, lest you should go astray. Although you could deduce it from there also. Allah had not gone into detail because you could use your own intellect to understand it. But because you couldn't understand it, and it may be that you might commit a mistake, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that that order or commandment or instruction was for akhlafi brothers and sisters. For anis, for allatis, where, where a father is common, the same law will apply as is the law about the sons and daughters. Antadillu, yubayyinu Allahu lakum antadillu, wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. And verily Allah, Allah knows everything. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa zikr al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at 
or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.